right, uh, welcome to the uh, Transparent Barrel. This is actually uh, Energy Boom 101 and uh, from the Transparent Barrel Studios in Norman, Oklahoma. And um, this is more of a public service announcement. Should be a five-part series, we hope. This is going to be dispatched from the patch one, and we're going to discuss the United States Energy Boom. So we're going to call this Energy Boom 101. And uh, we found a great little studio to record from. And actually, this is a good time, Jeff, if you don't mind. I'm going to have you follow me out here because if we're going to talk about the United States Energy Boom, and this is Energy Boom 101, and we're going to get all these maps together. I want to show them where we're sending this information. It's coming at you hot and live from Boom U. So you can come out here and see this thing. That's an actual full-blown university out there. There's a, there's a water tower, and there's a stadium, and there's, a, I think, an energy building or two over there. They'll be cropping up like crazy. There's the old Boomer Theater. You can swing over this way. President Bourne's house is probably over there. Uh, so you got yourself a full-blown Boom University where we're broadcasting, because we really want to try and tell the story. And that's what this is basically going to be, is a story of an unfurling energy boom that started in the United States of America in about 2000-ish, and is now in its second or third inning, and we're just going to sit back and sort of see if we can tell this, and uh, we're going to go back in and start with showing you a nice little map shot. Uh, I like what's happening here, Jeff, with the pullback. It seems to be working well with the kids at home. Uh, I have basically about eight minutes to give you an overview of what's going on in the United States energy boom, and then uh, I'll do probably five more episodes, probably ten minutes each, and we'll sort of get a focus on regional important factors within the United States energy boom. And then we'll just sort of start telling the story. Now, how are we going to tell the story? Our, um, our techniques will be primitive. The methods of mining will be uh, newspapers. So stand back, kids. Uh, we're moving fast here. Um, we're going to use the Wall Street Journal and the Daily Oklahoma. And that will primarily be it. And uh, we'll do a little Yahoo Finance when we need to. But to give you a nice little overview of what's going on here, I'm going to go ahead now, and you can hang where you are. I'm coming back with the Wall Street Journal. And this is from Thursday, October 3rd, about a week ago. And in the top right, uh, above the fold is what they'd call it if you were a, a journalism student. Boom, fold. Above the fold, big headline. U.S. rises to number one energy producer. So let me just read you the first paragraph, and then I'll explain how we got there by showing you about three different maps. Here we go. U.S. rises to number one energy producer. The U.S. is overtaking Russia as the world's largest producer of oil and natural gas, a startling shift that is reshaping markets and eroding the clout of traditional energy-rich nations. Probably pretty big stuff, I'm guessing. By the way, this article is written by Russell Gold and Daniel Gilbert. They should be given their, their dues, their props. Um, they're reporters. I think you will find, I would also encourage everyone to go get a Wall Street Journal and read this article yourself. Not only for the information it's telling you about, which is seismic, but uh, the style of writing is actually um, beautiful at times. And we may even read this article and do a podcast later. But in the meantime... Let's get back to what's going on with the U.S. energy boom. So you know that basically we're number one in the world. That's an oversimplification, but you know there's a big boom going on. How did it happen, and how much time do I have left? Probably five minutes, so here we go. All right, a quick check to see what my time limit is. And, oh yeah, about five minutes. Okay. So, Devon Energy is a company in Oklahoma City. Watch this. is a company in Oklahoma City that somewhere around 2000 uh, bought Mitchell Energy, which was run by George Mitchell, who he, you'll find out basically sort of cracked the code of the shale by applying the correct technologies uh, and horizontal drilling, hydraulic fracking and horizontal drilling. You'll hear this all the time. It's, it's an oversimplification, but it's an accurate way to see where two things came together to unleash. George Mitchell figured it out. Larry Nichols at Devon Energy bought George Mitchell's company and uncorked the Barnett Shale in Texas. And that's a natural gas play, shale play, tight rock, or something like that. And Devin went down there and uncorked it. And then uh, the 
uh, companies that do this for a living, like Devon Energy and Chesapeake and a few others out there, um, they started searching the United States for more shale plays that they can uncork, basically. And I'm going to give you a quick look at these shale plays that are gas, and then we'll get on to what's going on with the oil shale plays, because we're running out of time, but natural gas shale plays throughout the United States. Barnett is the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, Fayetteville shale, where do you think? Arkansas, Fayetteville. The uh, Haynesville, Bossier, and it may even be pronounced Lucier for all I know, because it's in Louisiana, and some of Texas. There's a big shale play. Um, the Neo Brara is a shale play that's sort of being developed as we speak, as far as natural gas. But the mother of all natural gas shale plays is the Marcellus, basic New England area. Probably Chesapeake would be responsible for taking this thing uh, to where it is, which is projected to supply the natural gas demands for the United States for quite a while. Anyway, big natural gas boom occurs, natural gas prices go up for quite a while and they collapse, which is a, another story we'll get to. Um, while that's happening, uh, the world goes into a tailspin in about 2008. A lot of things happen, but the technology that uncorked the shale gas plays is now being applied to the shale oil plays. Some of them have already been proven out. Continental Resources is another company in Oklahoma City, uh, run by Harold Hamm, and they're probably one of the premier drillers in the Bakken. And we'll probably make an enormous amount of money, because I think Harold Hamm's personal net worth increased over $2 billion last year alone. Just a side note. Um, but the Bakken is one of many oil plays in the United States. Uh, the Mississippi Lime right here in Oklahoma and the Woodford Shell right below it is really big. The Permian Basin in West Texas is an old school oil play that's enjoying new life. Eagle Ford uh, above Houston is a new oil play that's enjoying a uh, really uh, sweet life. Uh, the Utica is an oil play in Ohio, probably within the Marcellus. It's like a weather map, by the way. And uh, another premier driller out of Oklahoma City, believe it or not, Gulfport in the Utica. So you're seeing what's happening, and we're probably close to wrapping it up, but I know I can squeeze in a few more minutes. There's a big boom going on in the United States. A lot of Oklahoma energy companies are responsible for that, and they will be responsible for advancing it for the next 1, 3, 5, 10, 20 years. Uh, we're going to do our best to try and keep up with all of it because it's basically leaving the borders of the United States, and it's affecting the world. So a quick shot down here to the global map before we have to call it a day. I'm exhausted. Um, and the next episode I hope we'll get to, which should happen shortly, is to explain how... When this boom occurred in the United States, why all this global capital, which is money from the rest of the world, came to Oklahoma? And that's pretty obvious. It's so they can not only get the energy itself, but understand how to extract it back in their homeland. So there's a great game going on. It's, it's a global chess match as well as a global rainbow. The Bells of OU. That's a perfect time to release ourselves. On this first dispatch from the patch, we're going to call it a wrap. And then the second one will continue because we didn't fit everything in. But first dispatch from the patch, I want to thank my mom, my dad, my brothers, Ricky, Danny, and Johnny, and the rest of uh, my extended family. Uh, three, two, one, boom.